esteemed viewers, lovely people out there, formal letter writing is what we'll be looking at at this juncture. Formal letter writing is different from the other types of writings. Informal letter writing, semi-formal letter writing. They are different from these one. Now, formal letter writing has to do with business letters. It has to do with business. What you are going to write on paper is concise, is brief, is precise, is straightforward. You are not going to beat about the bush. You hit the nail on the head. There is no time for exchange of pleasantries. You are writing for, for, for business reasons. And we expect that the ideas should be concise. They should be presented in a manner that does not have questions. In a manner that is not debatable. So, formal letter writing has to do with two addresses. In formal letter writing, there are two addresses. We don't say address. Address is a verb. Address. So, it will interest you to note that your personal address could be at the right hand side of your exercise book or at the left hand side. Which means that your personal address, sorry, your personal address and your recipient address could be tilted at the left hand side of your exercise book. Just imagine that this is our exercise book. Your personal address could be tilted at the right hand side, the top of your exercise book, while another can bring his personal ad address to this side. Then he will continue with the recipient address here. So either the personal address is at the left hand side, you continue with your recipient address, or you send your personal address to the right side and bring the recipient address to the left side. Both are acceptable. Now let's delve into the addresses and know what exactly we are talking about. Starting with the personal address, for example, um, Modern Senior High School, P.O. Box, KN36, Bob, Eastern Region, full stop. Then, today is May 1, 2019, full stop. Now, let's see if what we've written on the board is correct regarding the address. Now, let's talk about the, the, the position itself. Now, this is the block address. All of them on the same line. We, do, we could also have another one, which will be modern senior. Now, note that it's in small, but you capitalize the initials. Then, P.O. box. Thirty six. Boom. The place. Full stop. Then the date will come under more than. So it becomes first May two thousand and nineteen. Full stop. Now there is one thing I will say here. If you want to use punctuation, of course the address here is four. The name of the institution should take comma. The post office box will also take comma. Then the place will take full stop. The date will also take full stop. If you don't want to bring the punctuation mark, leave it. It's also acceptable. Not to bring the punctuation mark or you bring it. If it will, if it, if it will confuse you, please just leave it. But if you are sure, you are conscious of it, then, comma, comma, full stop, full stop. Now, there is one thing I have forgotten to say. With respect to the date, 
you realize that the date is not part of the address. In fact, the date is different from the address. So we expect that in writing the date, you leave a space before you write the date. So there should be a space before the date. May 1, 2019. Full stop. There is space here. The date is not part of the address. Take note that when the month precedes the date, then the date becomes cardinal. In fact, it will take 1, 2, January 1. So we don't say June 4th. It's wrong to say June 4th. Because you are bringing the month before the date. So it becomes June 4th. Not June 4th. June 4th. Then, if you bring the 4th before the June, then it's acceptable to write 4th June. Comma, there should always be comma after the month or the date. I mean, which of them precedes each other. Then, whatever should follow. So, always take note of this particular thing. The date is different. It's separated from the address. So it should be separated when writing it. If everything is in block, fine. All of them will be in capital letters, block letters. If not, the initials. And remember, June, all the months of the year are proper nouns. And so they should be capitalized. Always. That is about the address. All right, so that is about the address. Now let's go to the recipient address. Now with the recipient, yes, it's tilted at the left hand side of your paper. It is not worthy that the recipient address could also be at the tail end of your writing. So after everything, you bring your recipient address at the tail end of your write up or your essay or your letter let's look at it you are writing to men's gold ghana the manager or if like the ceo men's gold ghana p.o box Maybe, 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 maybe thousand. Accra. Now, the fact that you can uh, slant your address, you know, when we wrote the other one, we have modern blah, 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 blah. P.O. box like this, boom, like that. Then the date came under this one, 12th June, blah, blah, blah. Of course, we call it the indented. Now, if it is slant, it doesn't mean that the recipient who should be slanted or should also be indented. It's not acceptable. So it should always be fixed, block, like this. So men's, the manager, men's good Ghana, P.O. Box, Accra. Now you don't bring the date here because the date has already been stated there. If you bring it here, I say what dress here? One, one, sir. And I say what dress here? One dress here. Why do you add the date here? Because the date is there already. You don't need to bring the date back here. Right. One mistake people normally do is, for, for instance, he will say that the manager or the CEO of Men's Good Ghana. No, no, no. That of something. Eh? Cancel the off and bring that institution after the manager. This is the manager. Where is he working? This particular company. The post office box, that is it. So, don't write or don't be concerned with of something. For example, if you're in the university and you're writing to your department, some people say that the head of department or the HOD is wrong. Then, if you write the HOD, the head of department, or if you like the dean of students, what are you going to write? What to be the next in the institution? So simple. 
the head why is it working department of sociology and social work or department of english then KNUST Kumasi that's it why do you stress yourself the head of department blah 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 no it's unacceptable and one thing about this some people ask the question that what if I write post office box instead of the PO box post office and then box both are acceptable but the point is how much time do you have to be writing post office box when it is as simple as PO before the box you don't waste time writing all those times all are correct they are all correct so after the personal address and the recipient address what do you do the next thing is your salutation so you, you leave a, a, a line neatly after your recipient address then you write your salutation but it is volo compo it is not compulsory others write it immediately after the recipient address is acceptable now if i'm writing dear sir or madam it's unacceptable to do this it is unacceptable to do this because if for the purpose of business you are looking for employment for instance application for employment or application letter um if you like cover letter and you write dsa it sends a signal to the empl employer that you are the lazy type these are petty petty mistakes we do and we are we are not employed these technical mistakes why do you write dsa or madam do some background check it will be in your own interest to find out about the organization you are writing to the institution you are writing to the company who is the ceo a, a female or the male now you should know that dear sir is for both the male and female in fact it is generic for you to say dear sir if you are not sure of the manager or the whatever dear sir is acceptable it's generic generic in that even if you go for you, you enter an office and you meet a male and a female you are a student you've gone to your department and you found your lecturer here a male and another lecturer a female when you are greeting them what do you say apart from you saying good afternoon sir sorry good afternoon madam good afternoon sir you cannot you can also say or you can simply say good afternoon sirs so you are referring to both sexes as what sirs where the male would breathe for the female so say here is generic it's for both but if you are sure that she's a female then dear madam you bring your comma neatly notices that you see with dear sir or madam has to do with um messages that are meant for the consumption of both sexes so it is not like they are not sure about a male or female they are communicating to both sexes so if you are a male sir is addressed to if you are a female is addressed to you so most notices are like that especially if you are in the shs and then you are being given a pta notice to send home or posted or mounted on notice board you realize that the right dsa or madam where because this is a notice the dsa or madam refer to the male parents and the madam for the female parents they are sure that they are communicating to both sexes but in writing a formal letter your business is that you are writing to a male or a female but dsa mean or stands for both sexes so it is not appropriate it is unacceptable to write dsa or madam now apart from bringing the comma you can also bring colon and it's also acceptable but this colon is the american type of salutation so when someone says dsa of course the cell should be capitalized when someone brings this the person is writing the american way then the point is that if you write if you use the colon then all the write-ups should be what american 
Because if you start the salutation with this type of punctuation, then we expect your uh, organization to be Z, American. We expect your center to be ER. We expect your labor to be OR, labor, neighbor, OR. All these are Americans. So you adapt the what? The American style because you have started with this. So that even program become this one. The double ME is the British. So let's be mindful of that. But when you bring the comma, then we expect to see the English, the British writing. So you have organization S. Your center becomes RE. Even your labor is OR, OUR. Your program is double ME. You adapt the British style. So be coherent in your writing. There should be cohesion. There should be coherence so that your write-up, if it is British, everything should be British. If it's American, everything should be American. That is just by the way. After our salutation is our heading. The heading is a brief, it's a concise write-up. And it should convey the message clearly. So it will interest you to note that the heading or the title is not a sentence. So you don't end with a full stop. Sometimes it could even be just a word, complaint. Complaint, one word, permission. One word, instead of some people saying permission letter, permission, one word. Because what you are writing is a caption, it's a heading, it conveys the message. Once you say permission, just one word, as your title, it's clear, it's obvious to anyone who is reading that this letter, it's a compliance letter, it's a permission. Alright. And the title or the heading of your formal letter depends on the purpose of your letter. The reason for your formal letter is where you get the heading. We have types of formal letters, of formal letter writing. We have just as we said, permission, we have permission letters, we have complaints, we have apology, we have invitation, we have requests. All these are the purposes for writing. Is it for apology? Is it for invitation? Is it for compliance? Is it for permission? What is it? You have this roommate in your hostel or your hall. Who is disturbing? Let's think about the hall. Or even your dormitory. Who is disturbing? When it's 12 or 10, 11, when you are coming to sleep, he now knows how to play music. Just say, well, do a bro sama. This time, you are fed up. You are writing a letter to the hall tutor to inform him or her about what your friend is doing. And that is what? Complaint. Is it a letter of invitation? Is it apology? So your heading is dependent. Your title is dependent on the purpose of your what? Your letter. Is it application for employment? So the title comes from the purpose of your writing. And as we were trying to say, The heading is a caption, it's a phrase, it's not a sentence. So you cannot end a heading with full stop. It's not a clause, it's a phrase. It's a caption that gives a signal, it conveys the message. So that if one sees the heading, he even knows what the body will be. Compliance letter, application for employment, as a secretary. I remember when we were in school, a friend of ours, wrote something like this application for employment as a secretary neatly underlined and he made it this way application for employment as an secretary and of course we know that the article and 
does not move with a word that starts with a consonant. Because this consonant is here, you cannot have two consonants meeting. So, a secretary, if it's accountant, this word is beginning with a vowel. So, we have an, so that an article is going to meet with a consonant. A consonant meeting with article. We cannot have article, uh, vowel meeting vowel, or consonant meeting consonant. Right. That is just by the way. So, application for employment as a secretary. There won't be full stop here because this is what? A phrase. Now, the point is, this is in small letters. So, you capitalize the initials. But in capitalization, one thing we should note is that we don't capitalize prepositions. So, Kwame Nkrumah University of Sa of no, a small. It's not capital O. Science and technology. And even the end there is written small. Because you don't capitalize prepositions and articles. So, Kwame Nkrumah University. of science and technology so you see that they don't capitalize prepositions we also don't capitalize conjunctions like end but yet or you don't capitalize them then the last thing you don't capitalize is articles a and and the. for articles the assumption is that when they begin the heading that is where you start maybe there's something that is where you start the capital letter if not you don't capitalize articles so you see commission on human rights and administrative justice and administrative justice it's not capitalized so let's take note of what these particular things let's take note of them so there is no full stop here. It is not done anywhere, not even in Abidjan. And it be No long things. Simple. And writing heading is a difficulty sometimes. So we believe that if you are confused as to how to write your heading, normally in about 60% cases, it works when you start with this letter of. Then you bring that in. Maybe letter of application. Letter of compliance, letter of invitation, letter of apology. So you see, in about 60% cases, it works when you do it this way. Brief, concise, letter of application. Alright, so that is about the head. And because we are talking about application, 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 a friend of ours who was also writing application, and all the headings he has been seeing is application, application, he wrote application for employment as a loan. Nothing says the same. Application for employment as a loan because it's confused. Right, so let's be mindful of the headings we write. Let's read it and read it and read it. Let's skim it and see what exactly, understand what exactly we are writing. So, someone will ask, Do I need to underline my heading or I should not underline? A school of thought has said that if you write it in small letters like this. You underline it. And when you write everything in block, you don't underline it. You leave it like that. That is one school of thought. Another one also thinks that instead of this whole thing, you see, 
Of late, we don't application letters, we, we, we don't handwrite it. We type them. So you board in it. When you board in your writing, you know when you take your laptop and you are typing, you board in your writing, you realize that it becomes separated from the letter itself, the body. So when you board in it, you don't need to underline it again. If you underline it and bold it at the same time, it is haram. It is a sin to do that. But if you don't bold in it, then you can underline it because by bolding it, you have italized. By underlining, you have italized. So you can use both at the same time, one at a time. You either bold it or you underline it. That is another school of thought. So adapt to which of them is favorable to you. Let us now move to the introduction. But even before we go to the introduction, let us take note of uh, the heading. It is not always that the heading should indicate the job you are applying for. Just as someone will say application for employment as an accountant. And I will say that application for employment as a secretary. It is not always that the letter would denote the purpose of application or the job you are applying for. You can just say application for employment, simple. And it is reasonable. Because sometimes even the job is not advertised. You don't see it anywhere. You are just applying. You are finished university, creating more. You are looking for a job. You don't even know if jobs are available in the institution, but you've written to them. So you say application for employment. Whatever job they give to you, you are okay. So it's not always that your heading should indicate or denote what you are applying for, the job you are applying for. Remember, we have solicited application letter and then unsolicited application letter. Solicited application letters are those that are advertised. Advertised. So, you are writing this application letter because it has been advertised in the newspaper, one of the dailies. In response to your advertisement that appeared in the dailies on so so and so date, I hereby wish to be considered the position of, or the position for accountancy or something like that. Because you are writing in response, solicited application. If it is unsolicited, it has not been advertised. No advertisement. If it is advertised, it is solicited. And so it's not always that it's in the newspapers. It could even be a bill. The post bills. So on some houses, you see them write post no bill. They don't want any flyer or advertised paper on, mounted on their wall. So the right post no bill. If you succeed in posting this bill in this part or on this wall or on walls, sometimes on the streets along the tree, you see solicited application letter and you are writing a response. But if it is not advertised, my friend, you don't bring in response. You are just applying. I wish to apply for the post. I would like to be considered. So you see, it's formal letter writing and. Going to the introduction, it is a business letter. We don't have time for essay of pleasantries. Unlike informal letter writing or semi-formal letter writing. And you are telling your friend about things that you know. I mean, things that is happening, essay of pleasantries. Go straight to the point. We don't have time for, I am happy to write you this letter. How are you? Have it not written to you all this while? It's not a result of procrastination. The reason for keeping you in suspense is that my mom had been hospitalized for days at G. And the doctors who had to operate on her had alerted my family that there was a chance that my, might, my mom might not return from the surgical table alive. My mind, like that of any other member of the family, has been oppressed by the chances laid against her. What I dreaded and detested more than any word can portray is the prospect of my mom's corpse being wailed to the mock, be at ease, Kwame. Mom sailed through the operation and had been disturbed this very day. I would read with thankfulness if in your next letter you tell me how everyone in the village is faring. Kwame, I write this letter to inform you about three things that make my school successful. Could you, I mean, extend your pleasantries. You are talking about your mom being sick, talking about the conditions. You, you, we don't need this here. Minya, we are talking about business letter. Application for employment is an example. Apology letter, straightforward. Compliance, invitation, straightforward. So if it is for job, I wish to be considered the post of, I would like to be considered straightforward. Then, 
The next thing you could do is to give an introduction of yourself. You introduce yourself. Hmm, so, blah, 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 blah. You introduce yourself doesn't mean you should be telling about who you are. Uh, I would be much delighted if I am permitted to absent myself from school next week. Let's say it's a permission letter. And you are starting with this. Then the next thing, I am Amma, I am in class 3 and oh, I am in form 3 and blah, blah, blah. Hello? We are talking about application letter writing, for instance. Now, you have indicated the purpose. You give us a background about yourself, a history of a sort. Educational background, qualification, employment, interest, and so on and so forth. In fact, your abilities, your credentials, these are what we want to have. These are what the employer needs. These are what every serious-minded person needs from you. So you don't beat about the bush. Hit the nail on the head. Your expression should be in the active voice. Many a time, it should be in the active voice. I wish to be, I would like to. And remember, it is I would. Or if you like, I should. Consider myself grateful. If given the chance to blab, I would or I should. It shows what? It shows respect. When you are watching Game of Thrones, you are seeing Game of Thrones. You see, I remember Sansa was having a conversation with uh, the Queen Daenerys. She said, I would. Because, you see, horizontal um, communication. Communication between two status. People of the same status. He has respect for this lady. The lady also has respect for her. So, I would. I should. That is the formality here. Not I will. Or I shall. Then, we should also take note of the fact that in writing formal letters, we don't have room for contracted words. Contracted words. What are contracted words? We are talking about am. Um, we are talking about aren't. We are talking about shan't. We are talking about can't. We are talking about it's. All these are contracted words. We are talking about she's. Write them in full. Instead of I am, make it I am. Instead of aren't, are not. Shan't, shall not. Can't, cannot. It's, it is, or it has. She's, is, she is, or she has. Sorry? You write it in full because you are writing a formal letter. You are not writing to your friend. You are writing to someone who is in authority. Someone who has some command of a sort. Someone who calls the shot. So it's a business letter. Then after everything, you conclude. You conclude. And in your conclusion, what do you tell us? In your conclusion, what do you tell us? Express optimism. Express some auspicious that I wish, oh sorry, I... <clears throat> All right. Shall we? Hmm. So in the conclusion, what do you tell us? Express optimism. Express auspicious. I mean, I believe my application would find favor with you. I hope my application would <clears throat> meet your kindest consideration. That is why many people write counting on the usual cooperation. It's, it's, it expresses what? Some, some sort of optimism that you, 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 you'll be given the job, counting on the usual cooperation. I believe my application, I believe my permission, I believe my compliance, I believe this would find favor with you. So you've expressed optimism. Then you conclude everything by using thank you to show some humility, to show some respect. After everything, you bring your subscription. your signature, then your full name, Juliet Ibrahim. Then you bring your email address, sorry, your email address, 
Not your email address. Address is a verb. Your email address. So, Juliet Ibrahim's email address, let's generate it and see. It will be something like Juliet Ibrahim at gmail.com. Or if you like, at yahoo.com. Phone number, or if you like, you subscribe. Remember, capital Y, small f, comma, signature, your full name. And many people believe that there shouldn't be full stop here because Juliet Ibrahim is not a sentence, it's just a name. So people believe that you don't bring full stop after writing your name. Others also say no, there should be full stop because everything ends here. Well, I believe with the fact that there shouldn't be full stop here because this whole thing is not a sentence. It's just a name of a person. At other times, before you bring your yours faithful, your subscription, you I enclose with my a photo start of my certificate or something. Or attached is my CV. So we'll be looking at the writing of CV at the letter date. After looking at all these, this is what you mean by business letter, formal letter writing, application letter for that matter. Thank you very much for your attention.